How would you define luxury? Your purchase of our rhinestones has put extravagance right at your fingertips. Here at the Baby's Booty, we are taking the standard of luxury and bringing it directly to you. Introducing the perfect companion to your Lux rhinestones, the Baby's Booty Ice Boxes. Our ice boxes are in the perfect sizes to complement your order. Each color in your purchase will be labeled and packaged in these elegant acrylic boxes, ready to display your luxury stones for everyone to see. The Baby's Booty Ice Box, where our bling is the finer thing. Well, hey, family, how are you doing this evening? I'm Eve with The Baby's Booty. And tonight is somewhat of a bittersweet monumental event. And we'll get to that in a moment. Also, we are going to do an in the hoop embroidery project, but we're going to incorporate some bling bling. I'm super excited because this is a project um, an embroidery design that I actually sat down and made it. So I'm kind of nervous. I don't know. <laughs> I have jitters right now because it's like, ooh, I hope this works while we're live because y'all know how things go. You go live and then things don't work out the way it's supposed to. So hopefully it'll go live. For those of you who are members, and that's something else I meant to do before we actually went live for those of you who are members here on the channel youtube hoop group members you will be able to get the files for free okay so it will be in the community tab um and you'll be able to have access to those and i need to get that on there i had it ready to go but then it's gone so i'm gonna grab that and put that up here um and for the rest of you I'm hoping within by Friday, it'll be available on Creative Fabrica because if I get it and check and make sure that it does stitch out properly and everything lines up like it's supposed to, the embroidery file and the accompanying um, SVG for the rhinestones will be uploaded to Creative Fabrica. So that's super cool. I'm very excited about that. Um, and hopefully we can get it to do right. Okay, so there's that. Let me get this uploaded to the um, community tab. Oh, no, that's not right. Now that I think about it. Um, sorry, I was not quite ready to see. There we go. Okay, so we will have this on the community tab, let's say tonight. And it'll be a moment um before we get started on it so you have time to download it and take a look at it especially if you have so it pro because right now the project is ah cuss that's not what i meant to do okay because the um what did i just do i just messed up you know what right now it's for everybody, and that is not what I meant to do. Let's do it this way. All right, sorry about that. That was completely wrong. There we go. Okay, so it's just the link. And if you caught it earlier, then whatever. Um, so the project is on the community tab here on YouTube. So if you want to follow along, you can click there, get the link, download it from off of Google Drive. Um, it is a mug rug, in the hoop mug rug. And I developed it so that we have a five by seven version 
and a four by four version. The five by seven version, of course, is a little bit bigger and it will have wording on it, but the four by four is just the one image of the snowflake like, with the rhinestones. And so we're gonna get into that. And I'm not gonna do super long into the beginnings and the howdy do's and whatnot tonight because this is a project. So usually we gotta make time for things to go wrong, right? Right. Okay. So I hope you're excited about the mug rug. That's what we're going to do. And as I mentioned, we'll be adding some bling to it. And I'll explain more about the design and all that jazz as we get into it. But meanwhile, I want to say hello and welcome to the folks who are joining us this evening. Without you guys, we wouldn't have a channel. And I definitely appreciate everyone taking time out of their busy schedules to come hang with us, right? And so I'm going to say howdy do to the folks that are here. And Let's get started. Now, StreamYard sometimes skips over comments, okay? So if I miss your comment, it's not intentional. Nine times out of 10, unless I tell you, hey, I'm skipping to the bottom. But usually StreamYard doesn't quite give me all the comments. So you'll have to forgive me for that. But Sharon Davenport's in the house first tonight. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Yvonne Hudson, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Precious Pieces, hey, honey. Welcome, Anita Omer. Welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. We also have Patricia Johnson. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Shirley Dabney is a YouTube Hoop Group member. Thank you very much. Bonita Neely. Hey, honey. Just Paper Crafting. Hello. Hey, Sheila Cushion Mary. Welcome, as always. Thank you for joining us. Craftable Things. Hey, honey. Hopefully, you'll get the stitch right along with me. It's a lot to pull out all that stuff, though, so I totally understand if you don't. But Marilyn, whenever she's in here, this is going to be a project I think she'll like. So I'm excited. And thank you, Craftable Things, for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Thank you. Me Creatively by Kim. Hello, Marianne. Welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. We have Leela Nelson, Viola Floyd, Creations by Kay Aisha, EJ's daughter, and Becky Chisholm. You guys are YouTube Hoop Group members. And I am so thankful and grateful for your support. Thank you for joining us this evening as well. Karen D. Hey, honey, welcome. Uh, Baby Giant Services, LLC, welcome. Dimps Designs, let my people go. Because mm, I saw you say you had to go back to work, girl. Oh, tell them folks, I said, get it together on Sunday nights. You hear me? <laughs> welcome. Joanna Holmes, welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member as well. We also have Boracua Sewing and Crabs. Welcome, honey. It's good to see you. Tell Milo I said hi. And thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Quilton Sister, welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Ashita Solomon, Kingsbury Crafts. T Creates, welcome. Thank you for joining us. D Smith, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. We got Tracy Murray. Hey, honey, welcome. The Crafty Port. Tracy Murray, I left you a message, my dear. I don't know if you got it or not. Please check your voicemail. I did call. And, um, I don't know. That. Did I get a response? I don't know that I got a response. Shoot me an email um, so that I can make sure of what I'm doing. Crafty Puerto Rican. Hey, I loved your video of Puerto Rico. You guys, if you've never, I've, I've heard of Puerto Rico. I would love to go one day. She did a video. She went back home and she visited and she filmed all the beautiful scenery, the forts. She did a tour. She even went to the restaurant. Y'all, it is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Got a homegirl really considering relocating. You know what I'm saying? So definitely check out her video. It was totally awesome. So go to the Crafty Puerto Rican, check out her channel and watch that video. It is awesome sauce. Hey, Terrence's trunk. Welcome. We also have Fabulous is 32. Tell hubby we said hey and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Make it with Marilyn. Hey, honey, buddy. Welcome and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Mary Brown is also a YouTube Hoop Group member. Miss JB, Leela Nelson, Viola Floyd, Miss Bickham, Candace BIC Design Creations. Welcome. Thank you for being YouTube Hoop Group members. So crafty. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. All right, you guys, I'm going to have to scroll on down. I do appreciate you all for joining us this evening. Tonight, you guys, we are ending the buy-in. And I do see new babies, so I'm going to grab my bell. Um, but we are ending the buy-in. Um, it is nine. It ends in six hours, okay? Six hours. So if you don't have your bling yet, you're going to have to wait. Um, and next year, it will still be buy-in. 
Okay, there's a reason behind that. We talked about that, and I'll go into it even more. Uh, welcome, Miss Janita McLean, for being a new member. Hello. Thank you very much. <laughs> we appreciate you joining the crew. We love having supporters, and we always appreciate any and all support you guys give to this channel. Even just showing up and hitting the like button is a support, and we appreciate it. Um. You guys, the buy-in is going to end, and then next year, we'll start back up the end of January. So that means the shipments may not go out for roughly 30 days after the last day of the buy-in. So that means you might not get your stones till the end of February. So it may be sooner, hopefully sooner. That's what we're working on. But the thing is, so if you don't have them with this buy-in, then you'll have to wait roughly 60 days. Oh, do y'all want to wait that long before you... Get some bling. Make sure you get your bling tonight. Get your bling fix on uh, because this is it for 2023. All right. Um. So Anita Omer got a new man. She got a new man in her life. And that's just, mm, and I'm sure he fine girl, him named Romeo. So congratulations, Anita, for Romeo. Holla. <laughs> congratulations, ma'am. We got a lot of babies in here. Diane McCoy. Got an Accu quilt. Congratulations. Holla. We're gonna be doing some quilting over there. We're gonna be doing some some El Tipo. Not, not El Tipo, but we're gonna be doing some um where's my thingy? Okay. We're gonna be doing some uh cheating quilting a little bit tonight. So it'll be all right. Um, let me see. So congratulations on the Accu quilt, Diane. Congratulations on Romeo Anita Omer. And I saw another baby. Hold on. Inspiration Creations got a new baby. Harvest Right freeze dryer. She's going to be freeze drying. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm not sure what. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're going to be freeze drying, but have fun with that, ma'am. Congratulations. Calatrish B, where are you? LaDonna Horton, thank you so much for supporting the buy in and getting you some bling, girl. You're going to love it. Um, Calatrice B, can I ring the bell for you? You got a 15 needle BAI embroidery machine. Congratulations, girl! Yes, new babies. Yes, that's a big baby right there, girl. Congratulations! And then she looked cushion berry. She got her mini press, the cricket mini press. <laughs> Congratulations! Yes, holler. We got some new bells going out this week, too. So, for those of you who wanted a bell, we will definitely be uh, sending that out so that you can ring right along with us. Becky Chisholm, she got a pro 1055 10 needle machine. Congratulations. Woo! Big babies in the house. Holler. Yas, hunty. Yas. Congratulations. That's what's up. Oh, y'all got these new babies in the house. Yes. Miss Beckham, she got a Cricut mini press, a knitting machine, and a 15 by 15 heat press. Holla! <laughs> this baby's all over the place. Yes, honey. Yes. Congratulations. Uh, all righty. Okay, Tracy Murray, no worries. Shoot me an email if you can, and that way I can be 100% sure what I'm doing. All right. Let me make sure I don't see any other baby. Sally Shillings, welcome from Massachusetts. We appreciate you hanging out. Um, Let's see. I thought I saw another baby. Did I not? No. Yes. Make sure I did not miss any babies. Oh, yeah, I did. Kenya, she got two new babies to elevate her business, an HTV Run heat press, and she got the Juliet. Holler, man. That's what's up. Yas, honey. Yas. Holler. <laughs> All the R's. Congratulations, Kenya. That's what's up. That HTV Run. HTB Runt Press is making rounds with y'all, girl. That that must be a good press. I haven't reached out for it because Lord knows I barely got room for what I have. I don't need nothing. Now another heat press, I promise you. Sandra, welcome. Good evening to you as well. Let me make sure I don't have anybody else. Sharon242, welcome from NC. And thank you for letting me know it's your first time with us live. That's what's up. Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, I think that is all of the babies. Let me no, so crafty. She got the sawgrass 1000. Holla, yes, honey. Yes, that's what's up. That's what's up. 
Congratulations. We're going to be shooting towards those ranks as well. That sawgrass, we need to go a little bit bigger. So that's what we're going to shoot for as well. And thank y'all. I appreciate it. It was time to get rid of all that straight, y'all. I'm telling y'all it was crazy. It was crazy. I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> it's time to be able to work out and sweat in my head and not have to worry about it. All right, so let's get to our project. Uh-oh, she said her son got her mini press as well. So we're going to ring the bell for your mini press. Please. Congratulations. Holler. <laughs> Joyce Lewis, welcome. For your first time from Connecticut, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Thanks. It's good to see you. Monica H., good evening to you as well. Um, Let's see. You missed. Oh, I just rang the bell for that, my dear. Uh, let me make sure I did not miss anything else. Uh, crack the book things. Somebody, she got new rhinestones this week. She wanted to ring the bell. Ma'am, I'm doing you good tonight. I'm representing you tonight because we're going to be doing some SS6. And I was like, Ugh. I had to do some SS6. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing. All right, y'all. Let us move over to the table. Uh-oh, MJ creates. I hope I'm in the right place. You're always in the right place if you like crafting hunty so yes you're in the right place just got my first embroidery machine a pe 900 i ain't even heard of that number yet so congratulations <laughs> yes honey yes that's what's up i need to teach my her babies are on the way we gonna definitely ring that bell when them babies get there um i went to me and mr mcquackens with the walmart the other night and we saw two new uh four by four machines i had never seen those before so i was like okay okay thought about it but then i was like nah fam i just got the oh it ain't even up there i just got the um p600 um the other day and i bought it used from off of a kid who didn't know what in the world he was doing so i got a new um machine but i'm not getting there another one so i'm ready Lavika Yas, that's what's up. Let us switch over to the table. I'm going to change this camera that I'm on. And we're going to go here over the top. And we are going to get started. Okay, so let me get over here. I'm going to grab my water bottle and my track ball so that I can change the um, screen whenever I need to for something different if it's something Mr. McQuackens can't get to. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to do an in the hoop mug rug, right? And so I've already cut out the um, rhinestone template. It's right here and right here. You can't see it because I've already cut it out and I haven't peeled it off yet. But we'll do that when we get closer to time for this to take place. But what I did was I designed a, an in the hoop mug rug and it has a snowflake on it on both versions, the four by four and the five by seven. And what we're going to try to do is do one of each. That's the goal. We'll see if we can't accomplish that goal tonight, but we're going to start with the five by seven um, and let you see the five by seven. So I'm going to plug that in. And we're going to move this forward just a little itty bitty bit so that you can see some of what's going on. Now, most of your mug rugs, most of your in the hoop projects um, start out with tearaway stabilizer. So I have the tearaway stabilizer right here in this super cute box. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with DIME designs in machine embroidery. If you are not, definitely check them, those guys out. Uh, because they are embroidery suppliers for the small single needle machines. And they have all kinds of cool stuff to make sure that you have what you need to be successful in your embroidery projects. And so this is one of the things that they um, have featured recently. And I love this. Okay, so this holds my stabilizer. So all I have to do is pull out my stabilizer for as long a piece as I need. Here's my hoop. So I know this is about as long as I'm going to need it to be. And this track is where we're going to cut it. And so all I have to do is move this little slidey back and then just run the slidey. And there my stabilizer is cut. I don't have to worry about my rolly and trying to cut my finger off like I did last year 
I don't have to worry about any of that. So that's super cool. I love this thing. And it's cute. It's super cute. Look at the pattern that's on it. Even though we need it in purple, D-I-M-E, we need it in purple. But for right now, this blue is purdy. All right. So we're going to start with some uh, tearaway stabilizer. And it's quilted. It's a quilted um, in the hoop mug. La Chica Monique got a Ricoma, got an EM1010. Congratulations to you, ma'am, for your Ricoma. Holler. Yes, honey. Yes, that's what's up. Um, the stabilizer, you know what? That's a good question. Let me grab the link for that. I didn't think of putting the link for that, even though I knew I was going to have it tonight. That's crazy. Let me see if I have that link handy. And then I'll drop it in the chat because it is an awesome um, stabilizer holder. It's super cool. So let me see if I have that. I should. Let's see. Let's see. Um, let's see. Normally, I have all of them in one place. And right now, I don't see it, but it is designs in machine embroidery. Nope, I don't see it. Give me a sec. Let me pull it up. Um, and it's super simple. And then, there we go. I right, drag. Can't spell. Okay, I'm just gonna give you the general link to it. Um, and that way you can go there and look at all the cool stuff that they have all right so i'm posting that in the chat okay all right so the quilt usually when you're quilting um i don't know sheila cushion berries no telling did i how long ago was it <laughs> If we didn't, we'll ring the bell for the uh, HTB Run Press. Congratulations for your HTB Press. We got so many of those HTB Run Presses. Y'all are killing the game, which the HTB Run. But the whenever you're doing a quilting project, generally um, you you add some kind of padding in the middle between two pieces of fabric, and then that's what creates that quilting effect, right? Well, I tend to cheat a little bit. So this is not um, the batting that's normally used for quilting. This is just some fleece, okay? Flannel, sorry, this is flannel fabric. No, fleece, I was right the first time. First answer is usually right. So this is just some basic fleece from the store. And funny thing is, it's a lot less expensive than the batting. But what you can do is you can sandwich however many pieces of this in between your two pieces of fabric to give you the loft that you're looking for. But for me, because this is just a mug rug, I only need one piece because I don't need a whole lot of loft for a mug rug. I need my mug to sit still, right? So I am going to pull up my design and then we are going to, like I said, we'll start with the five by seven one, okay? And then we're going to hoop our stabilizer first. So one of the first things I'm going to do, let me set that up there, is I'm just gonna test and see how tight this is because you don't want it to be too tight and tear your uh, stabilizer as you're trying to put it in. So I'm gonna loosen this up some and try it again. Okay, that's a little bit too loose. So let's come back in some and now let's put our stabilizer in the hoop. So you just lay your stabilizer down. Actually, you know what? Designs by Designs in Machine Embroidery also has another product on their website that's super awesome to help you with hooping. And they have these pads. This is felt on the front for ironing. And then this is a rubber grip on the back to help you with hooping. So let's go ahead and use that. So this one is actually the smaller one. I have a bigger one. I just have to go all the way over there to get it. So I'm not going to do that. But this will help hold your hoop in place, keep it from sliding all around while you're hooping your stabilizer. All right. And so let's pop this in place. And there we have our stabilizer in our hoop. 
stabilized. All right. So whenever you hoop your stabilizer, you want it to sound like a drum. You don't want it super tight, but you do want it to be nice and snug in the hoop. All right. And there is how it looks all the way around. That's a really good start to our project. So let's put this on the embroidery machine. Actually, let me check my bobbin and make sure that I got enough in there. All right, so the back is black. I'm not gonna worry about that right now because I just don't feel like changing out that bobbin, y'all. All right, and so let us grab our thread color because I have nothing up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in, uh, where is it? The other camera so that you can see that as well. I know if that could be done or not. So let's pull this forward some. All right. So slide this over so that you can see. Okay. So we need to get our thread and put it on here. I am going to work with the five by seven first, right? So the first color that I'm going to do in the five by seven is this pretty dark blue i think i think we'll go with the darker blue because that goes with snowflakes as well so here's my fabric let me get a complementary fabric to go with that and i mean not fabric color let me find a royal blue i think this should work just fine it's gonna work tonight all right so i should have taken a little bit of extra time to plan this out but i did not and it's going to be okay. So we're going to thread our machine. And you definitely want to follow all of your number guides on the machine. So there's one, go around, then two, go back around this channel. Three comes down and loops around. Four goes back here. And you want to make sure that when you're following these guys, your foot, presser foot is in the up position. Because if it's down, it's not going to thread properly. And you're going to have um, thread breaks and some of everything else. And you're going to be really sad. And we don't want you to be sad when you're doing your projects. All right. So let me thread this because if I'm remembering correctly, that little fella broke the threader, automatic threader on this thing. And I'm getting old, so I can't see. Hang on. Let's cut it back a little bit further so it doesn't split on me. And number six, I know it's going to be hard to see from the top, but number six is just above the needle. And you want to make sure that your thread goes behind that bar that's at the top of that needle as well. Okay, so we got it threaded. All right, so the way I have this designed is... um. The first stitch that stitches out is going to show you where to place your fabric, okay? So let's go ahead and put our presser foot down and we will stitch the first thing. Hey, Rosalyn, welcome and thank you for being a YouTube Hooper member. All right, so it's starting out good so far. So far, so good. Hey, Angelia Fuller, welcome. Hey, Tanya, welcome. All right, so let us, because you can't see that, so let us get, let me move this up just a little itty bitty bit so that you can see some more of this. So one of the first things you want to do, so now that the, um, now that the placement stitch has stitched, now we're going to do the quilting, okay? So one of the first things you want to put down is your batting fabric. That's your, your sandwich fabric that's going to give your top fabric some loft, right? So let's cut a piece of this so that we can put it down over that square. Where are my fabric scissors? Right here. So I'm going to cut this rough part off, even the selvage, even though I don't have to, but I'm going to. And then we're going to cut off a piece of this fleece all right and i should have set this thing where it would go to the other end so that's an adjustment i'll definitely make to this pattern 
whenever I work with it again. I'm going to edit it before we upload it to Creative Fabrica. Okay, and here is my first piece of fabric, the top layer. Thank you so much, Sharon Davenport, for the super chat. Holla! Go ahead and nod off, ma'am, to the sultry sounds of the embroidery machine. I totally understand. All right. And so what we're going to do is put our top fabric on top of the batting on uh, the batting on the stabilizer and make sure that your stitch outline is covered completely. Okay. So the next thing that should stitch should be the start of the snowflake, right? So because it's the start of the snowflake, I'm going to change threads and I'm going to do something bad and pull it from the back. I should not do that. We should always pull from the front. And for this, I'm going to go with, let's see, should I do white or should I do gray? I'm going to go with gray because I think silver with this blue is going to be super adorbs, okay? And the cool thing is, even though the embroidery design has certain colors um, put in there, you choose your own colors. And the way we designed it, or the way I designed it, is so that it will alternate between colors to force the machine to stop and not let it keep going. All right, so we did that purposely. So if you're like, gosh, why she got all these crazy colors? Well, it's because we wanted to make sure that no matter what embroidery machine it is that you're using, it stops. All right. So make sure if you're using like your brother multi-needle machine, you um, tell it to stop between colors. Hey, Sunshine. Welcome. Welcome. Um, inexpensive multi-needle machines would probably be uh one of the most affordable ones is the red line which i tend to use a lot here in the studio uh, so if you go to redline1501.com they have excellent machines all right so let's go ahead and start with our snowflake actually this is the stippling so it's going to do the stippling so you know what i don't want this i don't want this i should have left it what it was hold on y'all so I'm going to make it go back. Okay. I did that all kinds of wrong. I want my stippling to be the same color as the fabric so that it blends in. So I'm going to switch back and let it stitch right over those same, that same gray color I just put in there. So I told you wrong. I apologize. Like I said, I just... I have not stitched this out yet. So this is my first time stitching it after creating it. And to be quite transparent, I created this thing, started on it at 7 p.m. So I finished it just a little bit before we went live, about 20 minutes before we went live. So I haven't had an opportunity to stitch it out. So, all right, so let's try this again. What did I do? Oh, I see what it did. All right. There we go. So you'll be able to see that white a little bit, but it'll be okay. This is technically my test stitch. Now, if you want to, you can put a little bit of sewing needle friendly adhesive spray on your batting before you lay the top fabric down to hold this fabric in place. But you don't have to do that, but you can. I don't care for that. So I generally um, just let it do its thing and stitch anyways. So let's go back to the chat. 70 second thumbs up and got you on the big screen. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate it. Chronic Condition Crafting, I love your name. And you got plenty of company here on our channel. It's a lot of chronic crafting going on around here, ma'am. I promise you that. So here is the first um, step in doing our quilting. It's doing the stippling on this top layer. 
and it's outlining where the snowflake is going to go eventually where we're going to put our um rhinestone embellishment so you'll need a top layer of fabric you'll need a layer of batting for the middle and then you'll need a fabric for the back of your mug rug okay so two pieces of fabric same size um enough fabric to cover a five by seven square so i would go something like at bare minimum six by eight um piece of fabric but a little bit more than that to be generous um your batting which should be about the same size as your top and bottom piece of fabric and then your embroidery thread and your tear away stabilizer and all of those instructions once we get this tweak and make sure everything is just so and uploaded to the website then you will have all of those detailed instructions to go off of Hey, Winetta Wilson, welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube boot group member. All right, so the stippling is done. So now it's going to go to doing the snowflake. So now I'm going to switch over to our um, gray embroidery thread this time. All right, and I'm going to do the entire snowflake in gray, okay? So I'm not going to change colors again until I get to the final um, outline. All right. And so let's, there we go. And if I have time, there we go. If I have time towards the end, we can go into the process of taking an embroidery design and helping it, uh, helping get your rhinestone effects added to it. But we'll have to see how much time we have left. Uh oh, is that not stitching? That's not stitching, and I don't know why. Hold on. Let's see. We're going to back up some stitches. Holding down the... There we go. All right. Let's see what happened. Not sure. But my first culprit I'm going to look at is... Let's see, so the thread is in the needle. So the only other culprit would be the bobbin. So I'm gonna make sure my bobbin didn't run out. And if it did, put in another bobbin. It's running low, it's not out. So I should have enough to finish this project. So I'm gonna reposition my bobbin, make sure thread it back around. And let's try, try again. There we go. Okay. Let's try it again, y'all. Sometimes that bobbin will get undone and then it won't stitch. There we go. We're stitching now. Stitching in the kitchen. Good night, Miss Becca. I know I'm quilting from the embroidery standpoint. So this will be a really cute project to do um, because it's getting colder. Who doesn't like a nice mug of hot chocolate? Or if you're diabetic like myself, it can be a mug of coffee. Speaking of which, a cup of coffee would sound fantabulous right now. And just to walk you through um, this particular um, embroidery design, the way I have it, it's going to do a uh, triple stitch for the main parts of the snowflake. But there's also other parts to the snowflake that's just a straight stitch. And you'll see the difference here in a little bit. The straight stitch is where the rhinestones will be placed. Uh, so I kind of set it that way so that, you know, you can line the rhinestones up with that just that straight stitch. 
But for right now, this is a triple stitch uh, to get that snowflake on there. So I appreciate y'all coming to hang out for this project. And like I said, I designed it today and hopefully we'll get it together so that it can get on Creative Fabrica. Okay, so right now that's the outline. Let's go ahead and stitch our next one, which should be a running stitch. Yep, and it is. So this is just going to outline where rhinestones are going to go and give our snowflakes some more definition. So now it's going to do the next part to the snowflake. And again, I'm leaving this all in the same gray color. And I hope this works out because I tried diligently to get this thing to line up just right. Pamela Bradley White says, I'm going to make several of these much easier than sewing them. It does make it much easier. And we do have it. I'll show you how to close it off without even having to break out a sewing machine. All righty. I'm going to trim something really quick because that one stitch went rogue on me all right and then our next stitch is should be a straight stitch for more rhinestone placement it is all righty and after this should be the words for this particular mug rug now this is five by seven so i could fit wording on here uh, but I could not fit wording on the four by four. So the five by seven does have wording on there. So we're going to let that stitch out. And it's going to mess up a little bit because I had that white stitch earlier, but it'll be all right. And then I'm hoping that I sized it just right so that it will fit in this tray from Dollar Tree once it's done. We'll see. Because this was a pretty cool trend last year. So hopefully it'll fit in there and we'll check that, you know, as we finish up our mug rug. Now, for those of you who do embroidery and love the idea of being able to make a mug rug, even if you have a 4x4 embroidery machine, throw some purple hearts in the chat for us so that we'll know that we are not alone in our love of single needle machine embroidery or multi needle machine embroidery. We're not alone in our love of embroidery. The embroidery is fun, and this project is all inclusive in the hoop you don't have to do a whole ton of work and hopefully making with maryland will be putting some hearts in the chat too <laughs> we need to get her going with her embroidery machine and and get her keeping it going <laughs> no pressure no pressure but pressure But I tried to make this as simple as I possibly could. And I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna be a little bit impressed if this thing work out for me to put it together so quickly. I got those hearts in there right before you said. 
what we want you to have fun with. As you see, it's not a whole bunch of craziness. It was just your batting, your two pieces of fabric, one for the top, one for the bottom, um, and your stitches of your colors, and now your rhinestones, if you want to. Now, cool thing about this design, you don't have to add the rhinestones if you don't want to, but I mean, who doesn't like to bring the bling, okay? So we want bling on there. And this is going to be totally cute. Matter of fact, let me get Tilly up and going. So that Tilly will be ready when it is his time to shine. I'm not going to be able to show Tilly, though, which sucks because we got too many cameras going as it is. And this is a very simple design. Like, you can get these worked up and given out as gifts without any issues whatsoever. And once we're done, I'll um, take this off and show you what it looks like. And like I said, this is the five by seven version right here. My nephew had his baby. Oh! Yes, we do need to do that baby bib. We really need to do that baby bib. Show you how to do the in the hoop baby bib. I know you'll love it. It's so simple. Right. Let's see where we are. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what we have so far. All righty. This is the mug rug, and it just simply says warm winter wishes. I'm gonna cut these jump stitches. And then of course, like I said, right there is the white where I started out with the white thread on accident, of silver thread on accident, but it looks great, doesn't it? It's super cute. All right, so now at this point, I'm going to trim these jump stitches. All right, and once I trim the jump stitches, the only thing left is the final step. And the final step is to cover this with your top, your back piece of fabric rather. So we're just gonna lay this right over the top and make it disappear so you can't see it. I don't know, you're like, oh my God, what in the world? Yes, yes, it's all right. We are going to do some uh, flipping. Let's make sure I don't tear up nothing. Putting this thing on here, hold on. Come on, get right. Nope, still ain't on there right. Hold on. There we go. Nope, still on. Come on, fam. We ain't got time for drama. Let's do this. Let's do this. Hold on. Let me do something real quick. Make this come back. There we go. Thank you. So apparently it won't go back on the other way. All right. So let me, okay. So now what I do want to do is change my thread again, because this is the final stitch and it's just the outline of the um, mug rug and it's gonna close up our mug rug, okay? So I'm going to, again, from top we're gonna follow all of our thread guides my foot is up because the um red button is red so it won't have to um you don't have to worry about your tensioners being closed on you 
this mug rug, I made it um, about about seven o'clock. I started making this. I used Wilcom Hatch and created it from scratch. So it took me about an hour and a half to put this joker together. So, all right. So now what we're going to do is close up our mug rug for the most part. All right. So it's going to do the outline. And I see now I'm going to have to fix that because that's supposed to be a triple stitch and it's not. Because when you're closing up a mug rug, you definitely want that to be a triple stitch to keep it good and secure. So I will fix that and update it. But for the sake of finishing out our project, I'm going to let it slide. All right. So let us take this off, switch to the overhead cam so that's easier for y'all to see. I'm going to slide that back. And then we're going to take this out of the hoop. And when we pop it out of the hoop, it's super easy. You just bloop, pop it right on out. Okay, and then we will put that right there for the time being. And as I mentioned, this is tear away stabilizer. So all you got to do is tear this all off. Okay. And now we're going to trim off all of this extra fabric around the outside. Now you don't want to cut it all the way up against that thread, but you do want to get kind of close, but just not all the way up against it because you want to give that stitching, you know, some real estate to hang on to, right? So you don't want to cut it all the way up against it, but kind of close. All right. And so let's go around this way. All right, and then we'll go right here and you see where the stitching has stopped. So I gave you a generous amount to turn this thing inside out. So what you want to do to help yourself when it comes time to close this, even if you're going to stitch it closed, you're going to go in at an angle and cut like so. Then we're going to come back at another angle and then cut, even though that went crooked and cut you want to give yourself a tab to play with okay now you can cut it down some but not too much you need to keep yourself a tab okay and in these corners uh which you would learn if you did any sewing you would cut your corners at an angle so that it helps you know keep your corners where you can poke your corners out okay all right so now let's take this and we're going to turn it inside out what brand of scissors? Uh, these are, I have no earthly clue. I got them off of Amazon. You see that? B-I-R, B-I-H-R-T-C. I don't, I don't know. I have to link it in the, in the uh, chat or something in the description, which I probably should have because, you know, I am using them. All right. So let's turn this thing inside out. And I know for those of y'all who, so this is doing projects like this would be the re another reason why this should be a triple stitch as opposed to a single straight stitch to lessen the likelihood that you tear your stitches. Um, and also it can, um, why you shouldn't cut super close to that line either because turning your stuff inside out, it will tear um, if you cut super close and then it comes apart at the seams and then you're sad you work really hard on this and now all of a sudden it doesn't um it's not doing what it's supposed to do it's not giving a completed project okay and i apologize if you have arthritis i know this is kind of like tough on us right now my hands are doing okay earlier today i would not have been able to do this all right so now that that is turned inside out, I'm going to poke out these corners that should come out really good because I angled those corners. And here you have a completed mug rug. OK, well, almost completed. All right. So winter warm, warm winter wishes. And then you want to tuck this in 
on this side, tuck this in on that side. And we're going to close this up my way that I absolutely love to close up my projects. It's super easy. Um, and it involves using stitch witchery or hem tape, whichever term you want to call it. It's listed under both names on Amazon and at your fabric stores or your crafting stores. Okay. So hem tape or stitch witchery. And so here is our mug rug. Super easy, super cute. Your, your back is plain because we added that last, but all of your stitching and all of the backside of the embroidery is tucked away inside this super cute mug rug. So I'm going to give it a quick press over there from the back because I want these this to crease. You see, what is my heat press temperature over here? I wish I could get y'all over here, but I can't. So it's at 260 degrees. That should be enough to give me a little bit of a crease before we hit 350 for the rhinestones. And what I'll do is we'll do the rhinestones here in a little bit. So now that I've pressed it, it's nice and flat. Looks absolutely adorbs. And we will go with our, um, do our rhinestones once we get the four by four one done, okay? So for the time being, I'm gonna set that right here off to the side and we'll start with our four by four mug rug, okay? So for the four by four mug rug, we're gonna do pretty much the exact same thing. I'm going to use the five by seven machine. I was gonna pull out the four by four embroidery machine, but then I was like, you know what? That's drama when the uh, five by seven can do four by four as well. So we're gonna just stick with this four by four machine and we're gonna follow the exact same steps that we did for the five by seven mug rug. So I'm going to go ahead pull up the new four by four design. And like I said, the four by four design, I couldn't put words on it. So it's just the snowflake, which is fine. You'll still be able to set your mug on it. So don't fret. Um, Knowing me, it'll just be crystal AB because that's just the easiest thing to use for the time being. Um, and I have it already right here because I was doing the cheer jackets with the crystal AB. So that's the color I'll probably use. Even though, yes, there are a ton. Like I could do sapphire. Uh, we could even do crushed ice AB would be beautiful. Uh, but I'm going to stick with crystal AB. And in harmony with that, I definitely want to remind those who may be coming in a little bit late that the buy-in does end tonight for the year. So after tonight, that's going to be it. No rhinestones for the rest of 2022. We will be back January, end of January, 2023. Um, so if you think you'll be needing some stones, now is the time to get them for your business. Okay. Looks like my, looks like my thing tightened up on me. Oh, sweet. We got a new brother machine new baby brother ns 1150e congratulations rhonda for your new baby holla yes honey yes that's what's up okay so now we are going to switch the game up just a little bit let me see if i can find it i got colors let's see it should be with the blue nope not with the blue there we go I am going to do, I think this is the right color. Is that the right color? Or is it this one? Hold on. It is this one. So we're going to use purple fabric for the four by four embroidery project. So let me take off the blue. And again, I'm being bad pulling the thread from the top and you should really pull it from the bottom. Although I am known to be the rebel. All right. And so the first stitch that we're going to do is your placement stitch. So I'm going to just do it with the purple. It's going to be a little bit harder for you guys to see, but then I won't have to switch it when it's time to do the stippling. It's a lot of steps. All right. So my foot is up and I am 
getting ready to thread this needle. Y'all, I am struggling. There we go. It's about the time to get some new glasses. All right. So, I'm going to pull it forward. Let's put our other hoop um, mug rug up here. Let's pull this up some so that you can see it better. Boom. All right. And now let's stitch our placement stitch. So the first stitch that's going to come on here is the placement stitch for the um, for the four by four in the hoop mug rug. Okay. So basically a coaster. And let's get our pieces of fabric together. It's going to take two pieces of fabric and a piece of batting, just like the first one. Now, the pieces of fabric for this don't have to be as big because you're doing a four by four. Okay. So I'm going to lay down my batting and you want to... Um, yeah, the designs are designs that I made. If you are a member here on the channel, um, you can click in the community tab and you have access to these for free. So if you are a YouTube Hoop Group member where you do a monthly um, membership here on YouTube, then it's yours. But beyond that, we're going to try and list this on Creative Fabrica. Okay, so here is the batting. All right, so you want the batting to cover your um, square, the placement stitch, and now you want your fabric to cover the placement stitch as well, okay? So let's do that. Your, you got your HTB Runt, the embroidery machine is on the way. Congratulations on your HTB Runt, Miss Lisa. Woo! Yes, honey. Yes, congratulations. You are going to be over there pressing all the things, especially when you get your bling. So that's what's up. All right. So the next step that should start stitching is your stippling to create the quilting. OK, so let's go ahead and get that started. JLC Custom Creations, congratulations on becoming a YouTube member. Holla. Yes, honey. Thank you very, very much for the support of our channel. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So this is doing the stippling for our in the hoop four by four mug rug. Okay. Four by four mug rug stippling. And let me grab. Now this is going to stitch up really quick. Really, 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 really quickly. The four by fours tend to go super quick. Hello, Tokyo. Look forward to seeing you in the morning, your beautiful face. Alrighty, so here we have our stippling finishing up. Boom, just that quick. Did not take long at all. And you can kind of see part of it right there. Isn't that pretty? I love the look of quilted stippling. All right. So now that we're done with our stippling, we're going to start on our snowflake, okay? So we're going to switch threads and the exact same stitch out that happened for the five by seven is going to happen for this four by four. But the same stitch out is going to be just a little bit smaller. So this one is going to be um, SS six stones, whereas the five by seven is a little bit bigger snowflake. And we'll be able to use SS10 stones with that one. Okay. So let's go ahead and thread our gray thread. And you're welcome, Paula. You're welcome. I appreciate you saying that. All right. So let's thread. And don't forget, your foot has to be up while you're threading your machine. And you'll follow all of your guides that are on the machine. Oh, cool. Thank you, Patrice. I appreciate it. All right, so make sure when you're threading that you go behind that hook that's over the top of the needle. A lot of times people forget that one little step. So don't do that. And then thread the needle. And as I mentioned, I'm threading it by hand because the little fella, no, 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 I'm sorry. I bought 
this one, this is the five by seven. The four by four is what I got from the little fella. So this threader might not be broke. Ugh, I've been doing it the hard way. It's all right. Okay, so let's go ahead and start stitching our snowflake. Now, for me, as I mentioned, I programmed it where each color, each part of the snowflake is a different color, but you can easily, you know, change the colors or keep the colors. It's entirely up to you. That is driving me insane. I'm just gonna have to let it let it stitch, stupid thing. Okay, so this layer is the outside of the snowflake. This is the outside of the snowflake. So it is a triple stitch. So this is a decorative stitch. And then the next stitch will be a running stitch. And the running stitch is where the rhinestones will be placed over the top of. All right, so our next stitch is going to be just a running stitch. So we'll go ahead and let that stitch, and that's where our rhinestones will eventually be placed. to get this under my needle such a fast stitch out thanks you're welcome joanna so our next color is i'm keeping the same color all throughout my snowflake if you wish to switch up colors not an issue you're welcome to do that uh, but for the simplicity of this show we are going to leave it all one color All right, and so our next stitch, and keep in mind the running stitches are where the rhinestones will be going. The triple stitches are decorative. Super cute. Oh, I am so excited. All right, one more step for the snowflake. Hi, Nicole Reeves, welcome. Okay, that's it for the snowflake. Now we're going to finish off our little four by four mug rub. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this, and I'm gonna cut this, and I'm gonna trim this only because y'all know how I am. These these jump stitches, and you know, gonna fight a little bit. All right, and so now what you want to do is put your top piece of fabric and cover all of those stitches. All right, and now this one the four by four i'm pretty sure i did um program this to be a triple stitch that's what i wanted it to be yes it is so i'm gonna go back and change that for the five by seven one 
and then re-upload it to the same place. I'll trim this one while that's stitching. Man, I am so glad it looks like that bobbin lasted just enough to do both of these. Yes, hunty. Yes. All right. Thank you so very much. PE800, we appreciate you. We're going to close this down. We're going to lift our foot. And we're going to take this right on off. And we're going to slide this back. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Okay. So, overhead, so that you can see this a little bit clearer, we're going to go ahead and pop this out of the hoop. Okay. And then we'll do the exact same thing that we did with our first one. Let's get y'all switched around. And then put this up here so that it's out of the way. Okay, so again, tear away stabilizer. We're going to tear this right on off. Okay. And then again, we're going to trim all this extra fabric just like we did for the uh, five by seven. So you want to trim close, but not all the way up against it. You see how much space? It's about a quarter of an inch. Okay. You don't want to be all the way up on your stitches because if you do, like I used to do, and then when you go to turn it inside out, your fabric will shred. You don't want that. Okay. So again, I'm going to angle, then come across, then angle back down, and then go all the way out with it okay so you want to give yourself a little tab there i'm gonna trim it down just a little bit and then i'm gonna cut these corners at an angle you see that cut it at an angle bloop do this one at an angle bloop just like that bloop and now you're ready to turn this inside out okay so now you see this is a little weedy little space so you know don't get too too stressed and actually, you know what? I'm going to do something a little bit different than what I did with the first one. I'm going to cut this as well because I don't need the batting tab part. I just need the fabric tab part. So let me struggle and get this thing turned inside out. The four by four projects are a little bit harder to turn inside out. So don't fret. Just take your time and work with it you know what hang on let me cut this ceiling fan on y'all know i burn up every time i'm in here and then i got the heat press on so your girl is suffering right now all right so let's turn this inside of the out hopefully my hands will cooperate a little bit better than they did earlier and then I may have to make the opening a little bit bigger for you guys if I struggle too much. Because I don't like to struggle. There we go. I was grabbing the wrong thing. All right. So let's squish this right on up in there. Okay, and then eventually just stop and straighten some of this out. That'll help get some of that bulk out of your way. And then eventually you can just start tugging from this side. But take your time. Hands starting to cramp. All right, there we go. That was a little bit of a struggle. But we got it inside out. Now that we 
bloop those corners. We can push these corners out and they'll look nice and crispy. And let's poke these corners out down here. Four by four are not arthritis friendly. No, they're not, but they make super cute projects though. You know, they really do. Okay, and be careful poking out your corners. You don't wanna poke too hard and then poke all the way through and mess up your project. Okay, so now same thing. We're gonna fold in these tabs. Sorry, I'm gonna fold in these tabs. Forgot, you gotta be able to see. All right, and once you sandwich them in, let me see if I can't get that to sandwich a little bit better. All right, there we go. We wanted to line up. And there we have a four by four mug rug. Super cute, OMG, okay? So what I'm gonna do is throw this over there on the heat press again, just to crisp my seam, my, my creases right here, okay? So I'm gonna get that good and crispy and I'll be right back. Let's get all our bloops out of the way, move them over. And then I'm gonna come over here to Tilly who is at 350 degrees and super ready for the rhinestones. Let me make sure, cause it kind of untucked on me. Okay. So I'm just gonna give it a quick press it, press, press. Nothing major. All right. So here's my purple. Here's my blue. Okay, five by seven, four by four. Let's get this to tuck a little bit better than that. So we want it nice and straight. Look at that. Look, somebody come and look at this. Look at that. All right, so let's close it up. You don't have to pull out the sewing machine unless you want to. Now, I will say this. If you took the time and did a nice top stitching all the way around, that would be adorbs. Okay, but I don't have uh, my sewing machine up here. I don't have my sewing machine up here, so I can't do that. So all I do is just tear off a little piece of this stitch witchery and then slide it in. And all this is, is a strip of heat activated glue. That's all this is. And when I tell you this glue is pretty permanent, once we um, press this on the heat press, this will not open back up after it cools off, okay? So make sure that you have the glue, not where it's sticking out, but you know, where it's toward the top of the seam because you want this to squish at the top of that seam as much as possible. So I have that one and let's do the same with this one. And you kind of want to possibly put like butcher paper or something over the top of this, just in case that glue seeps out and you don't want glue on your heat press uh platen at the top okay so you may have to do that but that's something you want to keep in mind and as you see i'm doing the exact same thing i'm putting a strip of this stitch witchery hem tape in here i'm gonna tuck it in so that i make sure that when i sandwich you see that i want to make sure that when i sandwich this and i press it it seals this seam all the way shut. So we'll pull that up just a little bit, all right? You shouldn't be able to see the glue, but I'm taking a risk here. And I'm gonna put a piece of butcher paper over the top. And then you just press this. So I'm gonna put this on the embroider on the um, heat press rather, and go ahead and press this. I'm gonna grab a piece of butcher paper, almost forgot, so that it doesn't stick to my platen. And it doesn't take long and it, the, whenever you do this with an iron at home, you definitely want to be sure that your temperature um, doesn't have the steam setting on your iron. You don't want it on the steam. So now these are sealed. These are sealed shut. It did not take long at all. Super easy, super cute. Okay. So if you wanted to, this could be it. This could be your embroidery project. Um, yes, Leslie, you can use an iron. It just don't, don't put the steam setting on. You don't want your steam setting, but yes, you can use your iron. So these turned out super cute, right? Well, we fenced the turn, the cute factor up some notches. You hear me? So let's cool this off. I'm trying to let it cool off a little bit. Matter of fact, I'm going to just set them right up there. 
until I know they're, oh, look, y'all, let's see. Boom, holler. Tell me that ain't cute. What? This is totally adorbs. Dollar tree, I'm sorry, dollar 25 tree, holler. Okay, so we'll come back to that. But here's your five by seven. Here's your four by four. So let me grab the, where did I put it? The rhinestone part, which is right here. All right. And like I said, I did this part earlier. And whenever I do my rhinestone um, cutouts, I do have the SVG will be with the, it is with the file. So you can just grab that SVG and upload it to Cricut. Make sure that the size is what it says, especially for the uh, four by four one. All right. And I'm pretty sure it ends right about here, but I'm going to peel it just to be sure. And the closest one is going to be the four by four. And my Cricut doesn't really do the six by six as well as it should. So some of these may not peel. Oh, no, sorry. This is a 10 by 10. I'm sorry, uh, SS10. And then there's the, um, you see the SS6. They don't peel as well as they should, but it's okay. We're going to go ahead and grab these jokers right on out. And I'm going to cut this with my non-fabric scissors and pray that I did not cut any of my dots. All right. So what I'm going to have to do, there's a couple of the SS10 that did not come out. So we're going to grab those. And what time are we at? 1021? Wow. We're almost done though. So maybe by the time I'm done with this, we can show you how a little peek of how I was able to get this to work out. Okay. All right. So I'm going to grab out the rest of these dots. Like I said, the SS6 one, we don't, uh, we fight a little bit when it comes to getting these out. And I could use some uh, crafty, I'm sorry, the cottage chick, Angie Holden. She um, used some transfer tape to pick these holes out, which was very ingenious for folks like me who don't like to touch these darn dots. But I'm so used to doing it this way. I didn't think to grab some tape to go ahead and get these out. All right. And you want to make sure all of the dots are out so that all of your stones are in place when you go to do your design. Now, one thing's for certain, you do enough rhinestones, these little pink dots, you'll be in the shower, you'll find pink dots. Getting ready for work, you'll find pink dots. So get used to the pink dots. Or if you use the blue flop, you'll find blue dots. All right, so all of my rhinestone dots are out. Now, normally I will um, put my templates and store them on cutting mats. Let me see if I can't pull one out and show you. So um, Dollar and a Quarter Store has these flexible cutting mats to come in the pack. And I like to store my templates on these. It makes it easier for me to pull them out. Like for instance, let me grab this one. Here's the template. All I gotta do is just pull it out, start blinging, and then put it right back. I don't have to worry about peeling, taking it off, picking it up and all of that jazz. So we're gonna put this right up here. Whoops. We're gonna put it on straight, first and foremost. All right, and so now anytime I want to make this project, I just pull this out, bling it, and then put it back, okay? So we're going to start with the six by six because the six by six is a little bit more challenging than the, um, I'm sorry, SS6 is a little bit more challenging than the SS10 only because of the size of the stones. I grab my stones, I couldn't see them. Okay, so SS6 is right here. I'm gonna pour this on. 
just a little bit because it's only a few stones all right and then we are going to brush these in and like I said, if you need some rhinestones for your mug rugs, tonight is the last opportunity to get them. The buy-in will be ending at midnight Pacific Standard Time. See how simple that was? They brushed right in. They behaved themselves. Go SS6. My bad for talking junk, okay? So let me grab a piece of transfer tape. And I am going to, let's not mess this up. Hang on. I'm going to come over just a little bit more. Whoop. All right. So I want to make sure I grabbed everybody. I'm going to lay that on there. Meanwhile, let me come over here and pick these guys up because you don't want to mix up your stones and you don't want to grab your stones by accident with this transfer tape, your extra stones. And then we'll put our lid on and put this up. Now, when you get your rhinestone, whether it's in this junior box or whether it's in your tall box, do not pick up your stones by the lid because that's going to be dangerous. You want to make sure that your rubber band is still on your containers to help keep your stuff secure. That's what those are for. And then, you know, you could, but I still wouldn't suggest picking them up by the lid. Always pick them up by the container so you don't have any oopsies. Okay. So there we go. We picked this up. Now let's grab this. And here are the stones. You can barely see them. They're so teeny for our uh, little 4 by 4 mug rug. So I'm going to set this off to the side for a moment. And like I said, you see the thinner lines? Those are the lines that you want to line up your rhinestones with, okay? Now, hopefully, I did this right, but we'll see. Nope, I did not do this right. That's the wrong size. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to redo it. Well, that en en enables me to show you how we did it. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, no, that's not the right size at all. Like I said, going live has its challenges. And I haven't done this before. So let's hope that my this one is the right size. Matter of fact, let me take a look at that and see if it's the right size. And it don't look like it. Nope. So good. I get to show y'all how this works. So let's go over to, I'm going to take this with me. Let's go over to my, um, oh, I left my track ball. Hold on. Let's go over so I can share the screen and show you how I set up the rhinestone design. And hopefully I'll have time to cut this out. All right. So let's see. We are going to settings. And we're going to go here and whoops, I got hair all over the place. Yeah, I got hot. I will have to fold rhinestones on some of mine. One of my grands is rather clumsy, but she would turn it over even though the stones are not large. I understand. I definitely understand that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to... So we are going to go into Sew It Pro. Let me open this up. And then let's share screen. Okay. So here is Sew It Pro. And we are going to open up that design. All right. So Sew It Pro is an embroidery editing program. So you can edit embroidery designs if you would like to with Sew It Pro. You cannot digitize with this program. So if you have an embroidery machine, I strongly suggest that you get So What Pro. Um, it's very handy. It helps you out with some stuff. Like, for instance, let's go ahead and grab the 5x7. All right, here's the 5x7. We're going to select it. And right up here, uh, up above the tab in the middle is the rotate button. Let's click that so that it will rotate and show it the right way. And then over here on the right-hand panel are your color stops. I know I tried, Patrice, you see I got the size wrong. So we got to figure out what went wrong. But here are the color stops. The first color stop is the stitch outline to show the placement, right? The second one, let's highlight it so you can see it better. The second is the stippling, okay? 
The silver is, here are the different steps to the star. I mean, snowflake, right? And then here is the warm winter wishes. And then step number eight is to seal it off, close it off, and leave the opening for you to turn, right? So this is an example of some things you can do with Solar Pro. Like, for instance, say you didn't want it to say warm winter wishes. You wanted it to say something else. You can take this off. You just right click and select delete thread. And there you got a plain one. You don't have to have it there. And then you can add your own in there wording like a person's name or something like that. But what I'm going to do is I am going to um, take this outline of the whole star. So I'm going to select step number three. All right. And for step number three, I'm going to, let's see, actually, let's do step number three. I'm going to hold down control. And we're going to grab step number four. Do I want number four? No, I don't want number four. Let's do this. Step number three, step number. Five and step number six. Or should I just do three and six? I'm going to do those three. All right. And then there is an option right up here that says save applique cutouts. Save applique cutouts. That's what I want. But notice right here, I definitely want to remember this size, 3.24 wide by 3.39 high. You, you kind of want to remember that. And that's what I didn't do. So select one or more outlines to save for applique cutting. Actually, let's just do three because I don't know why it's acting up for me right now. So there's the outline, the main one. This, this inflation factor, this is where I think the size got misconstrued in my other program. So let's save that cutout. And we are going to save that. And now I'm going to open up Silhouette. Okay. So when you go into Silhouette, because I saved that outline of the snowflake as an SVG, well, now I have an SVG to go off of to create my rhinestone um, template. Okay. So let us merge in. That is not what I wanted to do. Merge in that snowflake. Five by seven. Oh, one. Here it is right here. I'm going to click OK. And there is the outline that I just saved from off of um, the uh, Sewit Pro. Now, the size is 2.378 tall. So let's see what the size is over here. It is not. Look, that's why my rhinestones were off. It should be 3.39 high. So let me change that and come up here and do, what did we say? 3.39. I'm going to make sure before I hit enter that this padlock is closed because I want to be sure that it keeps the correct aspect ratio as what I brought in. So now when I go and see this 3.227, when I go back to Sewit Pro, it should be 3.227. So let's go over here and it's 3.24, kind of close, but not close enough. So I'm going to unlock the padlock and make sure that it's 3.24 over here in silhouette because I have to be sure that my rhinestones are the exact size they're supposed to be. So let me do my padlock 3.2 and let's make this a four. Okay, so here is our pattern that I'm going to go off of for my rhinestones. Now, the way I decided to do my rhinestones, let me see, let's grab, I'm going to do something else as well. Let me grab this outline and I'm going to do an applique for this one as well. And this one, let's do something real quick. Let me move that out of the desktop. One. Let's go into there. Okay. Now I'm going to grab four because the reason I'm grabbing this is so that you can see what I'm doing with my rhinestones. So we're going to save that and go back to silhouette. Actually, let's look at our size. Our size on this one is 2.96 wide. So I need to remember that. So let's merge in. 
2.96 wide. Okay, so there's the other one. I'm going to grab both of them and I'm going to center them. All right, and so this one is 2.96 wide and it's not. Look at that, 2.96. And then the other measurement was 3.11. So let's go here. 3.11. So when you see people creating these embroidery designs and these rhinestone designs, and you're like, why do I have to pay this much? Why does it cost? This is work, okay? This is not an easy thing to do. And as you see, it takes time to put these together. So now that I've done that, I wanted this to be super simple, all right? So I just come up here to the rhinestone panel. Um, and now I have my SS10. I'm not going to make it do this as an outline. And the reason why is because it didn't do what I needed it to do. So I'm going to grab freehand, make sure that my SS10, because this is going to be, let me make sure. Yeah, this was the five by seven one. All right. So I want SS10. I'm going to grab freehand and I'm just going to grab me a row of stones and I'm going to hit release stones and I'm going to do a Patrice and we're going to make these purple so that you can see them and we're going to take the red outline off of them. Okay. So this is what I wanted for my, uh, my little thingies, my mug rugs. This is how I wanted the stones to be. So I put a stone here, put a stone here at the end of this one. All right, let's zoom in some so that you can see this better. All right, this is how I wanted it to look. And then I put a stone right here in the middle. And then I put another stone right here. But now this is much bigger than what um, I had it before because it had my size wrong. So now I can do three of these instead of just two. All right. So now I'm going to do another one here on this branch and another one here on this branch. And that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted as far as the outer part of the um, snowflake goes, right? So to make my life easier, I'm going to grab these. You're going to hold down, I think, control, no, shift, click on one, shift, click that one, shift, click this one. It is SS6 for the four by four. We're working with the five by seven one now. So it's SS10 for the five by seven um mug rug so now that i have all of these i'm going to group them together and i'll show you why i'm not going to take the time to do each one of those what i'm going to do is a shortcut so i'm going to do Control c or copy and then i'm going to paste this exact same setup of rhinestones why because each one of these branches are the exact same so i don't have to go through lining each one of these up. Thank you, Kevin, for the soup chat. Woo! <laughs> okay, so let's wrote, whoop, no, 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 we don't want to do that. That's one thing I wish Silhouette would do is let us lock certain layers in place. All right, so I'm just going to rotate this branch and then pop it into place where I want it to go. All right, and it should line up pretty much the same, about the same, okay? Rotate it till it's in place, and there we, we have it just exactly the way I want it to. Okay. Rotate a little more, and boom. Same thing, Control-V, bring in our next one. We'll rotate it so that it's lined up with this one. I'm going to move it over, move it up. Rotate it some more so that it's in the right place. Bring, whoops, come on, fam. All right, move it up into place. Rotate it a little more so that it's where it's supposed to be. And boom, come down. All right, control V, next one. 
I'm gonna come up here or rotate it, put it in place. Rotate it a little more so that it's lined up correctly and boom, that's good enough. Control V. So you see a lot of it is planning, a lot of planning to get this thing to turn out the way we want it to. All right, so that's not straight. So we're gonna come down. Liz, not feeling well. Oh no, honey bunny, I hope you feel better. Get better quickly, okay? Because them babies is counting on you and I am too for your next live, okay? You get the feeling better, but thank you for the super chat. <laughs> always a pleasure to see you my dear thank you for coming in and hanging out with us all right so let's get our arrow keys and move this into place all right and so control v and we'll do our next one and then we'll be pretty much done with the outer part of the snowflake okay come on fam that's what i'm saying silhouette i wish we could lock things down Oh, I did that upside down. I'm talking junk and still got to get it right. Okay. So here is the next part. And if you were in class with me and Patrice last night, you would have learned a lot of this because she is bomb.com with this. Okay. So let me move this one out of the way as well. Control plus arrow key with duplicate. That's right, AJ. Did you tell us that in the class? I cannot remember. Somebody mentioned that somewhere. Let's do this. And then let's move this. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to Sew It Pro because this circle here is the next thing I put the rhinestones around. Okay. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to save this one. And then we're going to bring this in. So let's merge in this one. And it looks like I'm only going to have time to do the five by seven because of time constraints. But, okay, so here is the next one. And then what I'm going to do is still on SS10. I'm going to hit freehand. And I'm going to start up here and I'm going to drag down to there. Then I'm going to drag down to there. Then I'm going to drag across to here. Then I'm going to drag up to there. Then I'm going to drag up to there. And then I'm going to go smack dab in the middle. And boom, for the most part, that looks great. Release rhinestones so that they're all separated. And then I'm going to take the time to... I knew that I was going to do that. That is so annoying. Silhouette, can you please help a helper out with that? Look, look, look. Come on, grab just the, come on, there we go. And then it's still, you know what, let's do this because that's going to annoy the hound dog out of me. And let's grab this and move it in place. So you see the whole premise to this is to get your stones lined up the way you want them. All right, that over, get that over, that's in place, move this up. It's not gonna be super perfect, but it's gonna look great. Whoops, 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 whoops. Come on, let's move you over some more, but you're not all in that one's grill. All right, and move this one up. And I'm just using my arrow keys right now. Come on, fam. You know I didn't hit that arrow key that much. All right. So that's that. This one is too low. Move that one up. Okay. Now, where are my other ones? They're right here. So I'm going to bring this one and put that one right in there. And it's behind that white um, hexagon. So that's why you can't see it. All right, so let's get this hexagon, move it out of the way. I'm going to grab all of these circles and I'm going to um, group them. And then I'm going to make these a compound path so that they all come together. Then I'm going to put them back as purple so that we can see them. All right, 
and then I'm going to whatever you you trifling okay and then let's move this back Boop. and then let's move this back so you see how this lines up and how it all comes together right so that's how I made it to work so that looks fantastic okay in my little humble first time making this thing opinion Okay, so now that I have all of that and I see it lined up, I'm going to take this away. Hello, we're having to delete. We're going to delete this way. And I'm going to take this away. And I'm going to hit delete. And then I'm going to take this away. And I'm going to hit delete. And then I'm going to grab all of these. I'm going to release them all because that's what I was taught. Let's grab this one, release them all. Even though I did make that one a compound path, no big deal. Then I'm going to group them all. And then I'm going to make these a compound path. It's a lot of steps. But what this does is it makes sure that when I take this over into Cricut Design Space, it is going to come in hopefully at the size it's supposed to be. Okay. Now, here is my design. I am going to go to file and I'm going to save the selection. So I just want the stone part. Save it to hard drive. Um, this is on my desktop. I'm going to save this as an SVG and I'm going to make this five by seven snowflake and I'm going to hit OK and replace what was there because what was there was the wrong blame size. OK, so now let's go into Cricut before I close this out. I don't want to close this out until I make sure I remember that size. OK, Tilly tried to cut off. So let me get Tilly cut back on Tilly's auto off kicked in on me and I don't want to because I need to press these stones to this mug rug. Okay. So where is Cricut Design Space? It is right here. So we're going to go to home uh, canvas. I'm going to upload. I'm going to upload image. I'm going to browse. I'm going to grab the five by seven snowflake that should be the right size this time. All right. And then I'm going to upload it. And then I'm going to select it and add it to canvas. Now let's double check this size. It says three by 3.14. I made my sister a rhinestone for her cricket today and it cut out great. Thanks to the class. That's what's up. I am glad that worked out because we all know this is not super easy. Okay. So look, 2.999 wide by 3.14 tall. Where's cricket? 3.14 by three. Perfect. I couldn't have gotten more perfect inter. Okay. So let's go to make it. I'm going to cut it on the mat. I'm going to confirm. I'm going to put it up here. We're going to hit continue. And then I'm going to put this on prints, right? So let's go back to our cutting table. So let's stop sharing that. We're going to go to settings. We're going to go to this camera. All right. And I'm going to put this on the mat so where is my mat i took it up here and you remember this extra piece that i cut off from earlier it's the perfect size so we're gonna lay this right there my backing is still on there and because this is ss10 i shouldn't have any issues with this cutting out cleanly and me being able to peel most of those dots off all right so let's get this thing loaded then i'm gonna go for my Cricut Maker, I'm doing medium card stock with more pressure. Seems to work really well for me. Thank you, um, So Crafty, for that suggestion. And then I'm hit go. Now, because this is for the mug rugs, it should not take us long at all. Okay, so let me grab the mug rugs. And it looks like we just might end on time tonight, y'all, as long as I get this thing to do what it's supposed to do. Okay, so we're going to let that cut out. But if you thought this turned out super duper cute, put me some purple hearts in the chat. I really appreciate it, y'all. This was fun. Um, as you see, there are some things that I'm going to have to tweak before we put this live on because I'm going to upload it to the Creative Fabrica account so that as long as you have Creative Fabrica, you'll be able to have access to it. Um, and then, like I mentioned, now there is a link in the uh, community tab where you can get a hold to this now. But as you see, I got some tweaking to do. So I'm gonna have to fix it, okay? So don't hold that to me. 
you know, my bad. I didn't expect it to act monkey on me. And then I'm going to try and fix this one too at some point in time tonight if I'm not too tired because it's been a long day and it was a long night. All right. So I'm going to grab, I was going to do some um, AB on this thing. Let's see. Not AB. I was, yeah, here it is. All right. So I do have my um, crystal AB. Whoops. See, see what I'm saying? Got to have them rubber bands on that thing, y'all. The rubber band wasn't on there and I didn't know it. All right. I wasn't paying attention. So here is my flock. And I'm going to peel off to where this ends. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that clean. Somebody come and look at this. Only one did not peel. That's what's up. Okay. And now I got one to cut out for this one for when it's time. All right. So let's get that one dot off. Move that off to the side. Let's grab our mat. Slide this up. Slide that up. And put this down. Now this should fit. Okay. This should work for us. So we're going to pour some down. I cut my hand so that cup cup my hand so that it doesn't throw rhinestones all over the place. And then we're gonna brush these in. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Get in there. And that's it. Just super simple. Got one that wanted to be a rebel right there. Get this out of there. Get that out of there. We got some extras. Brush this up out of the way. Brush that over. All right. And so all of the stones are in place. Let's see. Nope, that ain't going to work. Let's grab this. All right. And I'm going to go down with this like so. And while I have that down, I'm going to go ahead and pick these stones up. Put them up. Sir. All right, and now we're going to pick this up, and boom, just that easily. Paula D, thank you so very much for the chat. Woo! Holla! And yes, we do definitely appreciate you, Paula D, for sure. Okay, so here's our stones, all right, and so this thin line and that thin line is where these are supposed to line up. Let's see how well we did. Let's turn it where it matches. And that's super cute. Oh, my God. Okay, so it worked. It worked. Come on. Let's make sure everybody's lined up. Let's make sure everybody's lined up. It's off a little bit. looks like. Hold on. Let me twist it this way. Let's see. Because it could be the way. Let's see, because Snowflake could be, somebody could be a little bit different. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like somebody's different. So let's keep twisting until we find the right orientation. And then again, I will work on this some more. All right. Looks like that's going to, looks like that's going to do it. Let's see. Uh-oh, one of my stones flipped. Hold on. Let's get it flipped back over. Bloop. Get you back where you're supposed to live, sir. All right. And now let's press it. Looks pretty darn good. We got a couple of them that's a little wonky. But we're going to see here in a minute how well it turns out. And put it on the heat press. Press at 350 degrees for 15 seconds for our rhinestones. All right. And that's it. Let's bring this over. Show y'all how this looks. Let me get it where it's uncooled off some. Ooh, that's hot. And there we've got us a rhinestone. Mm. 
mug rug. I couldn't think of the name. Y'all, you, you know, a helper is tired. And look at the bling. Look at the bling. Bling. Bling, bling. Super cute. Let's cool it off some. Even though I'm fresh to look, I got my little white line there, but it's all right. It's all good in the hood. All right. So we're going to set that right there since it's hot. Okay. So you could actually either paint this or give it to them in this if you wanted to or give it to them by itself. Okay. And then we're going to take this up a notch or two because we actually ended on time, ending on time. Let's take this up a notch. Holler. Holler. Warm winter wishes. Okay. Okay. We got to put the little coffee in the cookie, you know. We gotta we gotta get it right. We gotta got us a cookie. We're gonna put the cookie right here. Warm winter wishes. And as you see, yes, it does sit on there. The heat from the coffee is nowhere near 350 degrees. So you got you some some coffee, you know, set on there, and it is adorbs. Okay. I'm gonna take me a congratulatory sip. Mmm. I do love my coffee, and I'm taking me a bite of my cookie. Mmm. Oh, so good. Yummy. How cute was this project? And you saw it was super easy to do, right? Right. Love it. You can do embroidery and add bling to it. You saw how we did it. Please bookmark this video so that you can go back and follow the steps for doing your rhinestone design and how to add the look, 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 look. Somebody come look at this. Look at this. Look at that bling. I'm telling you. You only have 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. You have four hours left to get you some rhinestones. So I suggest you jump on the bandwagon so you don't miss out, ma'am. I'm just saying, sir. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Super cute, isn't it? Look, even the 4x4 four four gang can get in on the quilting and the bling. And I'm going to go back and add the bling. We're going to tweak this and make sure everything lines up the way it's supposed to. but. 755, mind your business. Mind your business, ma'am. Mind your business. All right. So thank y'all. Let me come over here to the other camera so that we can have a chit chat and say our fairly wells and say good night. All right. So let's switch this over. And I want to definitely thank you all for hanging out with me tonight trying out my new bling and embroidery design working through the kinks you know what i'm saying it was live my first time stitching this out i'm glad the mug rug actually did stitch out perfect it turned out super duper cute willie roseman thank you so much for the super chat Ooh, holler. all righty so if you are a member this is in the community tab so you can go and grab this if you want it um, like you saw though, it does need some work with the bling design part. So I'm going to put the correct one up there so that you'll have the right one, um, to put on your little four by four snowflake. And I'm going to put the right one for this one up once I save it. But this is an easy project to do. You actually, because this was the wrong size initially, I didn't realize that. So I can actually even go in and add more stones if i wanted to you can do that if you want to so definitely check this out it's super cute all you have to do if you have solar pro especially you can get that outline and you can save it as an applique cutout as an svg and then import that svg into um silhouette studio and put the bling on it makes it easy silhouette makes it super super easy so thank y'all for hanging out with me this was fun. Absolutely love my mug rug. It's super cute, man. So let me know if you make one. If you make one, post it in the uh, Facebook group because we want to see your work too, okay? It's not just my stuff. I want to see y'all stuff. My stuff, you see it. I want to see yours. So let me know how it turns out for you. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you ha guys have a great night. And for those who have contributed i'm not contributed but those who have participated in the buy-ins for the 2022 uh year we are so 
grateful to you. We appreciate you. Our goal was to help businesses and help your business get up off the ground and do something new, something fresh so that you can make money off of it. Patrice and I are revamping our class for next year so that you can make even more money off of your bling um, and learn how to do these rhinestone designs. And then we'll have another beginner's class after the first of the year to help you guys learn all the basics about bling. So for those of you who don't know the basics about bling, there will be another class coming. But for the time being, we are honored to help you guys. We are honored to have you a part of our bling community and our bling buy-in family. Okay. So thank you so, 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 so very much. We really appreciate this opportunity to help you guys. Um, it's been an honor and you guys have been phenomenal. And it's awesome to see all the many projects that you guys are cranking out with your bling. So thank you. And we're just going to ring the bell and our gratitude for you guys. Thank you so very much for the bling buy-in. Yes. Okay. Yes. It was a good year. We appreciate it. So 2023 is going to be even more awesome. We got some tweaking that we've done and are doing to make your process more seamless and to make it more fun. Okay. So thank y'all so very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. And until the next time we see you guys here on our channel, we hope you have happy embroidering and blinging. Woo! Yas, hunty. Yas. So I'm finna go enjoy my coffee and my sugar-free-ish looking cookie. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Have a... Oh, I, did I miss the super chat? Did I miss the super chat? I think I missed the super chat. If so, sorry. Thank you for the super chat. Holler! <laughs> Check it out. Embroidery souls. Calm in my soul. And that's what I'm getting ready to do tonight, y'all. Y'all have a good night. Bye. <laughs> oh, man. Good night. How would you define luxury? Your purchase of our rhinestones has put extravagance right at your fingertips. Here at the Baby's Booty, we are taking the standard of luxury and bringing it directly to you. Introducing the perfect companion to your Lux rhinestones, the Baby's Booty Ice Boxes. Our ice boxes are in the perfect sizes to complement your order. Each color in your purchase will be labeled and packaged in these elegant acrylic boxes, ready to display your luxury stones for everyone to see. The Baby's Booty Ice Box, where our bling is the finer thing.